I'll have an opportunity to do this with you. I have a session. Just meet with us one last night up under the tent, Lord. And uh, Lord, if there's somebody lost and undone, Lord, I pray that you uh, show them their need for salvation, Lord. I should just be with us, working our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Let's turn to page number two, and that's the 27. And let's, let's stand.
Richard. We've got to turn that mic on. <laughs> I didn't realize it wasn't on.
side. Come on.
love it. And I know the Lord does. Amen. Amen. The Lord loves little children. Amen. Amen. Church. Amen. Amen. 
we're, well, we got it on wheels. We'll just take it where we need to. Amen. I'm thankful that Jesus goes where sinners are. Amen. Yes. And I believe His people need to go where sinners are. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying participate in the sin. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about practicing and hanging out in it. Amen. Wallowing in it. But I am talking about reaching them. Amen. John chapter number 8. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. John chapter number 8. Verse number 1. Amen. Let me turn this down a little bit. I've got some reverb going on. I think that it's due to the sides. Amen. We didn't have any of that when we just pushed everything out. But since we've got the sides up, definitely echoes back in here a little bit. And I don't want us to have feedback, so we'll turn it down just a little bit. John chapter number 8, verse number 1, it says, And Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and I'm sorry, the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when he when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? In verse 6, this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, in verse 8, he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one beginning at the eldest even unto the last and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw no none but the woman he said unto her woman where are thou those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I do thank you for this, this week that we've had, Lord. Thankful for the tent. Lord, your provision, your protection over it, Lord. I'm thankful for the turnout that we've had, Lord. I'm thankful for all these that were able to be faithful throughout the week. But Lord, as well, I thank you for you showing up. And Lord, we ask you again to come and be in our presence. Lord, I, we ask you that, that you would meet with us, that you would speak to hearts, that you would deal as only you can. And Lord, that as we hear you speak, you would speak to our heart directly, not to our minds, not to our intellect, but Lord, to our to our conscience, to our heart, and allow you to deal. And Lord, that we'd walk away rejoicing tonight, saying it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Father, help us. Help me, Lord. I need a fresh anointing tonight. Touch me. And Lord, I just ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you for standing. When we come to this passage of Scripture, and may I tell you, it is exactly like we are today. I think about the people and uh, the ignorance that they have believing that God does not see their sin. Believing that God would even overlook their sin. Or even believing that their sin is not as bad as someone else's sin. Amen? Amen. Uh, we come to this place in our life where uh, people begin to justify each other by looking at each other. And so uh, we come to this passage of Scripture and it was truly set forth for a trap for Jesus. They were trying to trap him. They wanted him to be uh, to give them a, a reason to stone him. They did not care about this woman. They were using her. They were abusing her, and they just cared to trap him. But may I tell you that it's more than that. We find everyone that's mentioned in this scripture, everyone that's here tonight, is mentioned right here. Come on in, young man. Come on, I saw you. That, that yellow puts it off. Amen. The, uh, the truth of the matter is, is everyone is here tonight. We think about the Pharisees and the religious that there is. And so 
uh, maybe you're in this boat and you're you're one of those Pharisees and the, the scribes. Boy, you know all about religion, but you don't know anything about Christ. Maybe you would be even one that's that self-righteous. Amen. Amen. That was the Pharisees. I think as well about the, the religious that are in the temple. They're, they're in the temple and Jesus is preaching. He's teaching unto them. And yet, uh, the, the religious are there. Amen? Those ones that had never really heard from Him, never received Him, but they were there. And then we think about this adulterous woman. There's someone here tonight that is in this very same boat. And you begin to look around and you say, Preacher, I, I don't know who she is. Well, might be sitting in your seat. Amen. 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 Yeah. Might be sitting in your seat. You see, she's a picture of sin. Yeah. She's a picture of where we are in our lost condition. She's a picture of what we need. Amen. Amen. And we find here that uh, she's the only one that receives salvation. Out of all these people that are there, there's only one that gets saved. Amen. How Amen. sad. Amen. How sad. We think about this simple sin as far as adultery, we realize that it is not being faithful to the one that we've vowed to have our faithfulness to. Amen? Amen? That is truly what it is. It brings pain. It brings suffering. It brings heartache. It breaks trust. Amen? And so as we consider this sin, uh, may I ask you how many times we've had spiritual adultery in our life? We've vowed to be faithful to the Lord, but yet we've failed. Amen. Amen. And we think about the, the pain that it brings the one that we said that we love. And so I ask you today, if we truly look at this passage of Scripture, we see that she's standing there exposed before the Lord. She can't hide behind anything. Right. They brought her in the midst. Stood her right in front of Him trying to bring, bring fault, trying to bring blame, and yet He says that you're forgiven. I wonder if you'd be exposed before the Lord tonight. You see, before you can truly receive, as we found in verse number 11, that forgiveness, you must first be exposed. Amen? Amen. And so let's look at this for a moment. We find in verses 2 through 5, we find the condemnation. And let's, re, let's look at this again in verses 2 through 5 of our text. In John chapter number 8, it says, And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had, had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us, that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? And so we think about her sin, first of all. Amen? We find that guilt comes from the law. In fact, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter number 3, I believe it's verse number 24, it tells us that the law is our schoolmaster. Amen? It teaches us guilt. You would not know guilt if there was no law. You could drive down this road as fast as you want if they didn't have a speed limit sign. Amen. Amen. There was no law that said that you couldn't go faster. Amen. And yet, once they put up that sign that says 35 miles, when you come into to Neville's, everyone followed that, correct? When you come in on Neville's Denmark Road, it changes before you get to the stop sign to 35 miles an hour. Everyone followed that. Amen. Bunch of liars. <laughs> Amen. I know one for sure that didn't because he was following me. Amen. <laughs> And so, we, we think about the law and how it exposes our guilt. Amen. And we think about the very verses that they were referring to was Deuteronomy chapter number 22 and verse number 22. It says, If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. Now hold on a second. The law tells us that both the man and the woman, yet they bring her in and they say that they were they caught her in the very act. May I tell you they didn't bring the man. Amen. Amen. You see, old Satan tries to do that. 
Yeah. Bad thing is, is that man was just as guilty. Amen. 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 There's some that are going to walk out of here tonight. I don't know who needs to be saved, but I know someone does. Amen. The last few nights we've had our folks. Amen. And yet someone needs to be saved. Some messages I've prayed about, God's given me peace about, go for it. Amen. 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 And so I'll preach away. But I'm telling you tonight, someone's going to walk away and go, I'm fine. I wasn't caught. I wasn't taken in the very act, although you're just as guilty. Amen. Amen. When we think about that sin that she had, and we realize because of that sin and because of the law, it brings a guilt with it, but it also brings a condemnation to it. Amen. Amen. It tells us here that she was supposed to be stoned. She was to be put to death. That means no hope. And we know that sin brings a wage. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 6 and verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. Amen. And so we have that death, that guaranteed death. In fact, take your Bibles, hold your place in John chapter 8 because we will come back tonight. Take your Bibles, look at the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter number 20. Revelation 20, look if you would, verse number 11. Revelation 20, verse 11. I'd like us to look here at the great white throne of judgment. You say, preacher, I, I can get out of this. That man thought he was he was fine. That man thought he'd be all right. Now she's taken and she's, there's not a doubt in my mind, she's fearing for her life. She knows the law. Amen. She knows she's guilty. Yes. And there's going to be a judgment to come if she doesn't receive some kind of pardon. Amen. 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 And so we find in Revelation chapter number 20, look at verse number 11. And I saw a great... The, I'm sorry, let me start that again. And I saw a great white throne and Him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened and another book was opened which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now I want us to hang on for a second here. I want us to realize this for a second. As much as they opened up the book of life and they were judged by the things that were written in those books, may I tell you what they did not or had not or was not judged by they were not judged by their name being in the book of life. They were judged because their name was not in the book of life. Amen? Amen. I'll explain this in a minute. Look at verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in them, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Now hold on a second. We think about that man for a minute. Back in Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 22, the Bible tells us that the man and the woman were to be stoned. Both of them were guilty. Both of them were to be sentenced. Both of them were to be de dead. Amen? Amen? And yet we find that the woman was brought. The man was not. But may I tell you, he'll still be judged. And what it's going to say in that book is guilty. Amen. Done. Right. Amen. Amen. It's going to say guilty. Now we find in verse number 14, it says in death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And notice this, look at verse 15. And whosoever was not written, no, hold on a second, found written. Yeah. Amen. He was not judged because he was in the book of life, but the judgment was there because he was not in the book of life. Amen. 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 You see, if he was in the book of life, then the other books wouldn't have said guilty. Amen. 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 Because they brought death. The book of life brings life. Amen. Amen. And so we find in verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Listen to me. <coughs> Condemnation is sure. Yeah. If you're here tonight and your book says guilty, and you know it, listen to me, there are very few people that can really claim, I didn't know. When you drive past that sign and you don't tap the brakes to slow down, it's hard to go, well, I didn't know. Amen. Amen. And yet we go through life saying, I'm going to be fine where I am, 
And may I tell you, when you come to the end, it's going to say two words. You're guilty. And I realize that's a, that's a compound. Thing. You're all right. Amen. You are guilty. How's that? How about just guilty? Amen. 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 Yes. And so we find not only the sin, we find her shame. The Bible tells us that she was taken in the very act. And I, I was not there. I cannot attest for this. The Bible does not tell us. But I don't see them being very kind to her. Amen? Amen. This woman, they probably had some names for, would you not? If I told you that there was a woman sitting in the midst that was an adulterous woman, you'd start thinking bad about it, wouldn't you? Oh, you'd start looking around. You'd even be saying, she better not get by my husband. Amen. I'm not joking. Men, if there was a, a male adulterer around here, you'd keep your wife back, wouldn't you? You'd have a few words about him. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Do you think they were kind to her? It says in the very act. I guarantee you they didn't even let her put clothes on they drug her out and they paraded her through the town brought her to the temple may I tell you they knew where Jesus was going to be yes, amen, amen. Yeah. they knew he was there the Bible tells us there in verse number 2 I believe it is that he was there early in the morning amen the daylight hadn't barely begun he was there early in the morning and yet they caught her in the very act I could see them as they drag her in there and she's kicking and screaming. She knows that she's going to be brought before the judge. She just didn't realize that she was going to be brought before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? She thought she was getting sentenced to, to death. Amen? Amen. And she's being brought in there. And may I tell you that she was naked and she was exposed. She had nothing to hide behind. She was brought and smack dab in the middle of that temple. She was set down there for everyone to judge, for everyone to look at, for everyone to snicker at, for everyone to curse at. Amen. 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 It's good. Sin still has shame today. Yes, sir. Oh, we live in a lifestyle. We live in a society that says that you can live your life however you want. There will be no consequences for it. But may I tell you, sin still brings shame. Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes, Girls, it's all right to be pure when you get married. Amen. 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 Right. There's no shame in being holy. Yes. Amen. There's Amen. no shame in being right. That's Boys, right. it's all right to be pure when you get married. Amen. 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 I remember a preacher preaching, and he probably preached up there at the camp meeting this last year too, John Dorsey. Remember what Brother Dorsey preached? He said the most nervous night of his life was his wedding night. Because after the preacher said, you may kiss the bride, he had to lift the veil and kiss her. First time they had kissed. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. And then they had reception. And by the way, the punch had no alcohol. Amen. 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 And they came time for them to leave. He was like, she's going with me? <laughs> amen. Amen. Hey, it's all right yeah. to live holy Amen. in this present world. It's okay to live for the Lord. It's all right to tell people that I don't want an open lifestyle. I don't believe in this homosexual movement. I don't need multiple partners. Amen. Amen. I don't need to shack up. Hey, that's what we're talking about. Amen. Amen. I don't need to lie. Amen. Hold on a second. I love it when preachers get up and they start <coughs> preaching against drinking and drugs and cussing and all this, but my Bible says that liars shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. You're right. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. Hey, it's all right. I don't need to lie. You might not always like what I tell you, but I don't need to lie about it. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 And so we find that there's still a shame. May I tell you, your nakedness was a shame. Amen become numb to sin but there's still a condemnation for it. I think as well as we look at this passage of Scripture in John chapter number 8 we look at verses 6 through 9 in verse number 6 this they said tempting Him that they might have to accuse Him but Jesus stooped down and with His finger wrote on the ground as though He heard them not. So when they continued asking Him, He lifted up Himself and said unto them, 
He that is without sin among you, let him first cast let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. Now I think about this. We find the compassion. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful where condemnation lies. Compassion is offered. And we find that it was offered to her in her condition. She didn't go home and get dressed. She didn't go home and change. She didn't go home and cut her hair. She didn't go home and do nothing. Amen. Amen. It was offered to her exactly where she was. In her sinful Amen. state. Amen. In her shame. Amen. Amen. It was brought to her. She was brought to the judge. But the judge offered her instead of guilt. Instead of condemnation. He offered her a free pardon. Amen. Amen. He said look. I've got compassion on you. The law teaches death. But I teach life. And that life is in me. Amen. Amen. And so we find here that he offers forgiveness. Oh. Oh. He would have had punishment. Amen. That's that's what the law taught. Is the law not righteous? Oh, no, the law is very righteous. Amen. Amen. You say, preacher, and I've had a lot of people ask me, well, what did he write? I want you to think about this for a second. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us what he wrote. Amen. It just tells us that he stooped down and he was writing on the ground. And I wonder, as the very finger that had pinned down the Ten Commandments. Amen? Amen? It was the hand of God that had pinned down or that wrote on that stone tablet twice the Ten Commandments. And as he, as they first come in and they tell him and he stoops down, I just wonder in the back of my mind if he wrote down, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Amen? Had he not wrote it before? Yes, sir. Oh, sure. And they continued on. I wonder if they looked at that and, and saw that he said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, they realized that he knew the law. He was there in the temple teaching, was he not? Amen. Amen. And so he was there and he was the subject of authority because, well, he wrote it the first time. Amen. Amen. And so as he's writing the, the, the whatever that message was on the ground, and then he stands up because they wouldn't quit. And he said that you without guilt, you first cast a stone. Then he stooped back down. Now this is where it gets interesting. Amen. What did he write? Hmm. I got a few ideas. I really do. I've got a few ideas. I think about the fact that he could have wrote. He could have easily put where grace or where sin did abound, grace did much more. Amen. Amen. He could have easily put, though your sins be as scarlet, will make them white as snow. Amen. Amen. Though they be as red as crimson, they'll be as wool. Amen. 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 Yeah. Oh, he could have. I've got several up here. Amen. He could have put Revelation chapter number 22 and verse number 17. Never, I, I'm sorry, let him that is thirst. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm telling you. He could have put Luke chapter 19 and verse number 10. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is that He wrote down, it began to convict them. Amen. Amen. Because He said you without guilt. <laughs> now realize that they all understood. Guilty. Amen. Guilty. Oh, I might have not been caught in the very act of adultery, but guilty. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That's good. And so we find here that it was offered to her in her condition. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Amen. It's not the fact that you've got to get clean enough. It's not the fact that you've got to get good enough because you'll never be. Amen. It's the fact that you've got to come where you are right there in the midst of your sin. Amen. Amen. That's where she was. She was right in the midst. You say, preacher, she was in the temple. No, she was in her sin. Amen. 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 And he said, if you'll just come. He said, I'll freely offer it. And so we find that it was obtained by all who come. There was one. There was only one left. But it's available to all. 
Jesus never denied her guilt. Never once did he tell her she wasn't guilty. Amen? Amen. Amen. But what he told her is that I condemn you not. I don't condemn you. And so we find that they could have had salvation. I think about Philippians chapter number 2, verses 10 and 11. Now listen, they didn't need to bow their knee now. But there will be a day where they're going to bow it. Yes. Amen? Amen. In fact, in Philippians chapter 2, and verse number 10 and 11, it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? Amen. The problem that we have today is we live in this letter to see in church age and we have this idea that I have need of nothing. I'm good enough. I've got everything that I need. I've got food. I've got some money. Enough. I will never have enough. Amen? But I can survive off of what I've got. And boy, I'm making ends meet. And I've got a vehicle and I've got friends and I've got all these things. But may I tell you, we don't need Christ. And how sad! Amen. Oh, Amen. they had their religion. Amen. They didn't have a relationship with the Lord. Amen. 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 I wonder if we'd ever come to the point to realize how much we need Him. I think about Adam and Eve, the very first ones that were naked. In fact, take the Bible, turn over the book of Genesis chapter number 3. In Genesis chapter number 3, we're going to be there in a moment. But I want you to think as they're exposed. They're sinners without hope. You see, Adam and Eve hid because they were naked. Amen? As you're turning over to Genesis chapter number 3, I want you to think about the cleansing as well. If you're not there in John anymore, that's fine. The Bible tells us when Jesus had lifted up Himself and saw none but the woman, He said unto her, Woman, where are thou, those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Now I, I bring us to the point of the cleansing. Amen. Notice if you would, it eliminates the condemnation. Amen. Amen. When you're cleansed, you don't, you're not condemned anymore. In fact, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter number 1 and verse number 5 that Jesus Christ is the one who washed us with His own blood. Amen. That He Amen. washed us from our sins by His own blood. In Revelation, I'm sorry, in Romans chapter five and verse nine, much more than being justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through Him. May I tell you, when you're saved from wrath, that means wrath doesn't come back on you. That means Amen. that you're saved. Amen. Amen. You're delivered. In fact, the Bible tells us that you're saved to the uttermost. Right. Amen. 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 You say, preacher, I don't sin anymore. You're a liar. Yes. That's right. Amen. Yes. You're a liar. Listen. Amen. But. Because I'm saved, I don't have God's wrath on me. Amen. Amen. I don't have that second death that we saw there in Revelation chapter number 22, verses 14 and 15. I don't have to worry about the wages of sin is death because His wrath no longer abides. Amen. And so we find here that He eliminates the condemnation. You see, my sins are washed away. I think about the Old Testament. The Bible tells us in Micah chapter number 7, verse number 19, He will turn again and will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. But Thou will cast out all, our, all their sins into the depths of the sea. You say, Preacher, no one can go all the way to the depths of the sea. Listen to me. Here's the problem. If Jesus just put our sins in the depth of the sea, someone would be able to dig them up. Well, Satan does, doesn't he? Amen. Does He not remind you what a low-down, dirty, rotten, nasty scoundrel you are? Yeah. Hey, Amen. You, what do you mean you're saved? How could you be saved? Don't worry about it. You're that sinner in the midst. You remember how everyone looked at you? They know your sin. Amen. Amen sir. I'm thankful He didn't just take my sins and put them at the bottom of the sea. I'm thankful that He didn't just put them behind His back. You say, preacher, that's all in the Scripture. Listen to me. In the Old Testament, they had to go once a year to have their sins recovered. Amen? Amen. When Jesus did it, it was washed away. Amen. 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 It was completely removed. It was completely gone. I didn't have to worry about it. And because He removes that condemnation or eliminates that condemnation, He establishes a covering. Amen. Amen. 
Now he takes care of that nakedness, doesn't he? You say, preacher, I don't want to be exposed like that. I don't want people to know I'm a sinner. Well, let me let you in on a little trick. You can fool them, but you'll never fool God. That's right. That's right. God knows you're a sinner, and to be honest with you, so does everyone else. Amen. 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 There's not a single person under this tent that's perfect. I don't care how good you think you are. That's right. Amen. Amen. And we find in in Genesis chapter number three, for the first ones that were naked, we find in verse number eight a covering. It tells us in verse eight of Genesis chapter three. And they heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, Lord God, amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. She couldn't hide, could she? She was right there in the midst. And God knows before He ever asked them where they were. Amen. He already knew. Amen. Because He asked them right after that, who told you He was naked? He already knew that they knew. He already knew that they had sinned. Amen. And He already knew what He was going to do. Amen. Amen. Notice if you would over in verse number 21 of Genesis chapter 3. Had to be a lamb that had to die. Spotless lamb. Pure lamb. Perfect lamb. Amen. Genesis chapter 3 verse number 21. And Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. Woo, I'm thankful Amen. for that. Listen to me. He made those coats of skins, but may I tell you that is that he had taken that lamb in order to have a coat of skin, he had to kill the lamb. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But because he killed the lamb, oh, the lamb of God, behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Amen. 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 He's clothed me. Yes. Amen. He's clothed me. Yes. Amen. He gave me a robe of righteousness. Amen. Hey Amen. Yes. I have a robe that no one can take off. Amen. I have a robe that when he looks down at me, he doesn't see my nakedness. He doesn't see my sin. But instead he sees his son. Amen. 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 That's a robe. That's clothed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, why did he do it? Because I can have it no other way. I would still be in my sin. Amen. I'd still be condemned. I'd still be without hope. I wonder if we could make a device that if I put it in front of you, it would take and project all of your sin across this white backdrop. I wonder if I was to put it there, how many would begin to cringe because your sins are really exposed. Amen? Yeah. Amen. In fact, spouses might move away from each other. I'm just talking about your sins of today. I mean, right now. In this day. May the 5th, 2017. I'm talking about all your impure thoughts and project them on that wall. I'm talking about all your actions, all your attitudes, every sin that you've done just today. Amen. And you'd say, preach it. I wouldn't want that. May I tell you, I'm thankful there's not such a device. Amen. But I want you to realize that God sees them all. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. And if you're not here today washed in the blood, then He knows all your sins. You say, preacher, you mean if I'm washed, He won't know? No. He don't want to know. Amen. He wants to forgive you for him. Yes. Amen. 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 And so I ask you tonight, if he was to call your name, would you be like Adam and Eve and go and hide because you know that you're exposed before him? Or maybe 
you desire fellowship because you've been washed in the blood. All week we've been discussing your way or God's way. Your way or God's way. Which way is it going to be? You're going to be in the midst tonight, exposed before the Lord and condemned? Or are you going to be able to walk away? As He said, I condemn you not. Go and sin no more. Amen. 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 Let's stand. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I do thank You for this day. Thank You for this week that we've had some decisions that have been made. I pray, Lord, as well that You've provided the help that has been needed. But Father, I truly believe with all my heart there's someone here tonight that needs to be saved. I believed it last night, Lord. And yet it was just 